In this video, we're going to do a quick walkthrough from start to finish of a simple parametric 3D design made with OpenSCAD. Each of the bowls in this picture were made with the same code, the code that we're going to walk through in this video. This is OpenSCAD. You type simple code on the left, press F5, and see the results of your code in a 3D design on the right. So for example, you might make a circle of radius 20 or 30, press F5 and see the result. You can change how smooth the circle is on the outside. You can even make the outside only have four sides or any number of sides. Make any kind of polygon you like, like here, a pentagon. One really powerful thing about OpenSCAD is that I can take all of the parameters of my design and define them up at the beginning of the document where they're easy to modify. So now radius and sides are things I can modify right up at the top of the document and it'll change my output uh, based on what I choose those parameters to be. Now I could do other things to this circle. For example, I could make it have rounded corners with the offset command. I could control how smooth the corners are by giving offset its own resolution command. And let's say I wanted just the boundary of this, just the boundary of this rounded pentagon. To do that, I would use the difference command. In the difference command, the first thing that you put inside difference will be what started with, and everything else that you put will be subtracted. So I'm going to put my offset pentagon first, put another copy of it to be subtracted, but make the offset radius a little smaller. I'll call it the difference be the thickness and now I get a boundary of this rounded pentagon. Now I'm going to need this shape I think three times in this design so you can make it a module so that you can call it later without having to type all this code every time. So I'm going to call it poly shape and now if I just write um, poly shape anytime I write poly shape it's going to make this shape and I'll be able to modify or translate or do other things to the poly shape. So I'm making a new section for just renders where I type poly shape and oh it didn't work because oh capitalization is very important it's poly capital shape there's my poly shape. Now I can modify poly shape by giving it different arguments. So here I'm giving it the argument called solid and I'm going to make it so that if the solid parameter is set to no, then it will take away the inside, and if it's anything else, it won't. So now whenever I call poly shape, I get to specify what kind I want. I don't want it to be solid, or I do want it to be solid. Or if I just type anything, it'll be the opposite of no. But if I type no, it'll be open on the inside. Now that's actually just a two-dimensional shape. But with the linear extrude command, I can pull that shape up to any height I want, say 30 millimeters high. And now that 2D shape that I made has become a 3D shape. And you can change other things uh, about linear extrude, how the extrusion works. Like you could tell it how many degrees to twist during the extrusion. You can see this is pretty chunky. So you can also tell it how many slices to use. If I increase the number of slices, it'll be a smoother transition as it extrudes and you can also make it flare out or flare in by changing the scale. So I'm going to take these four uh, parameters so see changing the scale can make it bigger or smaller as it goes to the top. I want to take these four parameters and add them to the things up at the top so I'll have a parameter for how tall my object will be, a parameter for how twisty it will be, and a parameter for how much it flares out or in as it extrudes upwards. That last one I'll call body flare. And the slices, instead of making a parameter for that, oh wait, there's a uh, scale, okay. In the slices, instead of making a parameter for that, I'll just make it twice the body height. That way I'll always know, no matter how high it is, that I have the right number of slices. So that's the body of the thing I'm making. I'm trying to make a bowl. So this is the outside of the bowl. It would be nice if the bowl had a base. The base is pretty much like the sides except that it's going to be shorter. 
so I don't know, 10 high, and it should not be, so it should be solid. So there's a base that doesn't look very good. If you take the flare away, you can see what's happening. I need to translate up the body. I can do that with the translate command so that it sits on top of this new base. So that's, oh, I have to make it 10 high because that's how high my base was. And there we go. Now it's sitting on the, the body is sitting on top of the base correctly. I can call this 10, I'll call it base height so that I can change it whenever I like. Base height appears in two places. And you can see that now if I change base height, everything changes correctly. Both the translation and that height change appropriately. So now that the bottom has this straight bit, I kind of want to have the option for the top to have a, a rim, like a straight bit there too. So I'll define a rim height and do the same kind of thing. I'll extrude up just by rim height, no fancy twisting or anything and uh, it will not be solid and I'll translate up by uh, the body height. Okay, oh that was close. I also have to add the base height. So I need to translate up the base height and then up the body height and apparently I didn't twist it so I need to twist it so it matches my twisted shape. So I'll rotate it backwards by body twist so that it matches up and that looks good except oh for the flare so I didn't do the flare yet I'll scale that to uh, body flare and that will make the top rim piece scale exactly the right amount and now if I can just change how high the rim is I can make it a more subtle rim that's pretty nice I think I'll make that a little taller make the base height maybe 50 and there we go so now I was done, so I press F6. F6 will make it render so I can export it as an STL and print it.